Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of November. New Delhi suffers most toxic air in a year, heightening coronavirus worries. Indian Army Chief meets Nepal counterpart in Kathmandu, discusses ways to boost bilateral cooperation. And Pakistan transfers Kartarpur Sahib's control to non-Sikh body. India condemns move. And now for all the details. Air quality in Indian capital New Delhi was at its poorest in a year on Thursday as the concentration of poisonous PM 2.5 particles rose to 14 times the WHO safe limit. Delhi Chief Minister said rising pollution was complicating efforts to tackle the increasing pace of coronavirus infections. Air quality in Indian capital was its poorest in a year on Thursday as the concentration of poisonous PM2.5 particles rose to 14 times the WHO safe limit, while Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival said it was complicating efforts to tackle surging coronavirus infections. Smoggy skies covered the city as the overall air quality index crossed 450 on a scale of 500, the worst since November 15, 2019. The average PM2.5 level was 370 per cubic meter of air volume against the WHO's prescribed limit of 25 per cubic meter. लेकिन अभी तो pollution आ रहा है। हम देख रहे हैं चारों तरफ आसमान भरा हुआ है धुएं से और कोरोना इसकी वजह से कोरोना की स्थिति और खराब हो रही है। Given the COVID situation and the uh, the dip in, in in the temperature, the situation is only going to get worse, and it will have an adverse effect impact on overall health uh, of the citizens of Delhi. Delhi's air pollution typically worsens in the months of October and November, fed by a toxic mix of farm fires in surrounding states, vehicular pollution, and still winds that hang low over the city. Kejriwal urged residents not to burn firecrackers during the upcoming Festival of Lights Diwali that each year pushes air quality to its worst. A boat carrying more than 50 people capsized in Ganges River in India's Bihar state on Thursday. With several feared drowned, some people were rescued by local divers with the help of boats, while team of state disaster response force also reached the spot to take over the rescue operation, according to local media reports. Eyewitnesses said there were motorbikes and cattle on the boat that capsized near the riverbank in state's Bhagalpur district. Boat capsized cases are frequent in India's eastern state of Bihar, where people put their lives at risk to travel in overcrowded boats. Such accidents occur due to the poor maintenance of the boats. Indian Army Chief General M.M. Naravne met his Nepalese counterpart, General Purnachandra Thapa, on Thursday and discussed measures to further boost bilateral ties and enhance defence cooperation. Naravne is currently in Kathmandu on a three-day visit to Nepal. The Army Chief's visit comes months after bilateral ties were hit in May following a bitter border row. Indian Army Chief General Manoj Mukund Naravne, who is on a three-day visit to Kathmandu, on Thursday inspected a guard of honour at Nepal Army headquarters where he held talks with his counterpart General Purna Chandra Thapa. Both sides discussed army-to-army -army relations and enhancing bilateral defence cooperation. General Naravne arrived in Kathmandu on Wednesday afternoon and started the visit by touring religious places on his first day. He also handed over ambulances and medical equipment, including ventilators, X-ray machines, computed radiography systems for two field hospitals to Nepal Army. Nepal's President Vidya Devi Bhandari later conferred the honorary rank of General of Nepali Army on Naravne at an investiture ceremony. Naravne's visit to the Himalayan nation is largely aimed at resetting the bilateral ties that came under severe strain following a bitter border row. 
Before wrapping up his three-day sojourn, the Indian Army chief will pay a courtesy call on Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, who is also the country's defense minister at present. Moving on. The Pakistan government has transferred the management of the historic Sikh shrine Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in the country to a non-Sikh body against the sentiments of the Sikh community. India on Thursday condemned the move and called upon Islamabad to reverse the unilateral decision which deprives minority Sikh community rights to manage affairs of their holy place of worship. The Pakistan government has transferred the management and maintenance of the historic Sikh shrine Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in the country to a non-Sikh body against the religious sentiments of the Sikh community. PM Imran Khan-led government notified the control has been transferred from the Pakistan Sikh Gurdwara Management Committee, a body run by the minority Sikh community, to the administrative control of the Evacuee Trust Property Board or ETBP, a non-Sikh body. India's Foreign Ministry on Thursday condemned the move and called upon Islamabad to reverse its unilateral decision to deprive the minority Sikhs the right to manage affairs of Kartarpur Sahib, the final resting place of Sikhism's founder Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Sikhs in India and their representative bodies including DSGMC, the Delhi Sikh Gurdwara Management Committee, also expressed grave concern over the move. The move by Pakistan comes days ahead of the first anniversary of the inauguration of the historic Kartarpur Corridor on November 9. A visa-free border crossing that links Dera Baba Nanak Shrine in India to Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan. In news from Afghanistan. Afghan government officials and the Taliban have been exchanging heated words over the Monday's brutal terror attack on the Kabul University. First, Vice President Amrullah Saleh has blamed the Taliban's involvement despite militant group Islamic State claiming responsibility for the attack. Afghan government officials and the Taliban have been exchanging heated words following Monday's attack on the Kabul University, with first Vice President Amrullah Saleh blaming the Taliban for the attack that took the lives of at least 35 people and wounded dozens. Saleh, in a Facebook post on Thursday, once again linked the university attack to the Taliban, saying it has resemblance to the attack on American University of Afghanistan in Kabul in 2016. Interior Ministry spokesman Tariq Aryan also said initial investigations indicate that the Taliban was behind this brutal attack despite Islamic State claiming responsibility. Taliban spokesman Mohammad Naim in response to Saleh said the first vice president's rhetoric is a conspiracy against the group. He said Taliban categorically condemns the attack. The university attack came amid efforts to kickstart direct peace negotiations between Afghan government and the Taliban in Doha. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is in the midst of a second wave of virus infections after the detection of large clusters centered on a garment factory and the country's main wholesale fish market. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa stressed that the entire country will not be locked down at all due to the spreading of coronavirus and people will have to learn to live by stringently following health guidelines. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa on Wednesday said it was both impractical and difficult to close down the country until a cure for COVID-19 is found and therefore the public should be ready to return to normal lives while following health guidelines. Speaking at a discussion held Wednesday regarding the control of the COVID-19 virus in the country, he emphasized that it is important to keep the country open as well as to control the spread of COVID-19 virus in the country. We cannot afford to close down the country anticipating a cure for COVID-19 would be discovered, the president said. Sri Lankan authorities earlier extended weekend curfew in the western province, including the capital Colombo, till November 9 as the number of COVID-19 patients continued to rise. Meanwhile, a total of 12,187 COVID-19 cases have been reported so far and 6,305 patients are under medical care at hospitals. Another 389 individuals are currently under investigations in hospitals. 
In news from Bangladesh, Bangladeshi government reopened the National Zoo located in the capital Dhaka from November 1 for the visitors maintaining proper health guidelines amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The zoo authorities announced to disallow visitors amid the COVID-19 outbreak in the country. Bangladesh National Zoo in Mirpur section of capital Dhaka reopened to the public from November 1 with new safety guidelines. The move came after some eight months of shutdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Visitors entered the zoo in compliance with hygiene rules. In a press release, Fisheries and Livestock Ministry said social distancing must be maintained, visitors must go through disinfectant tunnel and the temperature should be measured. The number of visitors should be kept limited to maximum 2,000 daily. Besides this, hand sanitizers should be provided to visitors and the visiting hours has been fixed from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Meanwhile, Bangladesh reported 1,517 new cases of COVID-19 bringing the total case load to 414,164 as of Thursday. A total of 21 new coronavirus deaths were recorded, pushing up to death tally to 6,004. Married women across India on Wednesday celebrated the Hindu festival of Karvachot, which celebrates conjugal bonding. As part of the tradition, they broke their day-long fast after sighting of the moon and offered prayers for long life of their husbands. Married women across India on Wednesday celebrated the Hindu festival of Karva Chauth and broke their day-long fast after sighting of the moon and offered prayers in all hope their husbands will have a long life. Karva Chauth is a centuries-old tradition where married Indian women fast for the day to pray for their spouse's good health and success. They wake up before dawn to begin a fast at sunrise and not eat or drink until they see the moon through a sieve at night. Donning colourful attires and ornaments, women celebrated the auspicious occasion with fervour amid the coronavirus pandemic. ये अपने पति की लंबी उम्र की कामना के लिए रखा जाता है उनकी सक्सेस के लिए कि उनकी तरक्की हुई होती रहे हमारा साथ यूं ही बना रहे और घर परिवार सब ऐसे ही खुश रहे अच्छा लगता है अच्छी फीलिंग आती है मेरा तो ये पहला करवा चाहता है तो मुझे अच्छा लगा बहुत ज्यादा इन नॉर्दर्न जम्मू टाउन वुमेन ऑफर्ड प्रेयर्स फॉर द लॉन्ग लाइफ ऑफ देयर हस्बैंड्स एंड आल्सो हर्ड सर्मन्स रिलेटेड टू द फेस्टिवल करवा चौथ फॉल्स ऑन द फोर्थ डे ऑफ द हिंदू मंथ ऑफ कार्तिक just a few days before Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, which is also considered auspicious for the married women. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. New Delhi suffers most toxic air in a year, heightening coronavirus worries. Indian Army Chief meets Nepal counterpart in Kathmandu, discusses ways to boost bilateral cooperation. And Pakistan transfers Kartarpur Sahib's control to non-Sikh body, India condemns move. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.